welcome to From the Woods Today, and I'm here with Lori Thomas, and we're talking about the Tree of the Week. Yeah, thank you, Renee. I, I'm glad to be here, um, and we're actually out talking about the Tree of the Week, which exactly. is exciting today. Um, today, we thought we'd actually look at some of the main characteristics of our deciduous trees, particularly the leaves, and what we use for tree identification. Okay, what's deciduous? Deciduous, that's a good question, Renee. Yeah. Um, as you kind of look behind us, you'll notice most of these trees do not have leaves on them. So a deciduous tree is a tree that will have, it grows new leaves in the spring. They're there all summer long. In the fall, they change a lovely color and then they'll drop mm -hmm. and they won't have leaves for the winter. And then they'll have leaves again the following spring. So most of the trees in Kentucky, our forests are dominated by deciduous trees. Okay. So we wanted to kind of focus on some of the characteristics um, that we use in tree identification for our deciduous trees. So what are we looking at here to determine what you, how you determine even what kind of tree you're looking at? Sure, so well, before we jump into that, because there's a several different main characteristics we'd want to look at, mm -hmm. I wanted to mention a tool that could be really uh -oh. helpful in helping oh. you identify an unknown tree when you're out in the woods or even in an arboretum or someplace. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a dichotomous leaf tree leaf key that can help you identify your tree by asking you several questions about some of the characteristics we're going to go over and it'll eventually get you to your answer hopefully. Look, look like so, it fit in your pocket too. It does it's great <laughs> the, the tree finder is a great little um, mm -hmm. dichotomous key and like Renee says it fits in your pocket so it's perfect. Definitely. Um, but so when we're using a dichotomous key or when we're trying to identify something there's a few characteristics that we do want to start looking at mm -hmm. and the first one is obviously does it have leaves or needles and we know that this tree has leaves since it doesn't have any of our needles it's not evergreen um, and then the next question that or the next characteristic we're going to want to look at is um, how are those leaves arranged on that twig so leaf arrangements really important and we've got three different kinds of leaf arrangement we have alternately arranged leaves so those would be leaves that um, zigzag along the stem of the tree and then we have oppositely arranged leaves and those are going to be leaves that grow right across the street basically from each other on the twig hence opposite that makes sense yeah, exactly yes. and for our oppositely arranged um, uh, leaves we've only got four different groups of trees um, that are native Kentucky to Kentucky that have oppositely arranged leaves those are our maples which we have many of those um, also our ashes our dogwoods and our buckeyes so if you come up on a tree and it has oppositely arranged leaves and it's a native tree more than likely it's a maple ash dogwood or buckeye and then the third type of um, leaf arrangement we have is whorled, where those leaves are whorled around that branch. And the main species we have that's native to Kentucky would be the northern catalpa that has whorled arranged leaves. So it's kind of like it's going around in a circle around exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah, it encircles that stem. Mm -hmm. So for the tree that we're looking at today, it's quite a beauty actually. The tree we're looking at today has alternately arranged leaves and you can actually see how they zigzag on that twig. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing, we've looked at the leaf arrangement. So we've got alternately arranged leaves. Okay. So once we've determined our leaf arrangement, we're gonna talk about, we wanna determine the leaf form. And the leaf form is, we've got two types. We have simple leaf form and we have compound leaf form. And simple leaf form is gonna be a single blade that's attached to the petiole. So you'll have just one blade attached to that, that leaf petiole that's on your branch. Okay. And then we have compound leaves. And compound leaves will have multiple leaflets, a collection of leaflets. They can be arranged like a feather, they can be pinnately, or they can be arranged like a palm. And then there's all of these leaflets that are connected to the one leaf branch, or the one leaf petiole. Are there a number of leaves between each one of those? Like y yes, so- a Maximum uh, and a minimum? And it depends on species. So okay. we have some trees like our Kentucky coffee tree. It has lots of leaflets. It's got way more than 20 leaflets. Oh. Whereas we might have a buckeye, remember one of our oppositely arranged ones, it's only going to have five palmately shaped leaflets. Okay. So that number varies depending on species. Okay. So in this one, and today we can't actually see our leaves. If we got really close, you can see there is a little leaf emerging. Right, I see that. Because yeah. um, this is one of the trees that flowers before the leaves emerge. Um, but we do have one little leaf emerging there. There's actually a couple right there. 
and it's going to be this is a simple leaf and actually when this leaf expands it's going to be heart shaped mm -hmm. so we are going to have one simple leaf here that is alternately arranged on this tree um, so now that we've figured out that we've got an alternately arranged species and it has a simple leaf, the next thing we want to look at is going to be looking at the edge of the leaf or the leaf margins because that's going to help us really zero in on what species we have. So we've got several different types of leaf margins, as you can imagine. We have our entire or smooth leaf margin. There won't be any indentations. There aren't going to be any kind of um, uh, teeth marks or anything along those edges or serrations, as we call those. Kind of like a knife. Yeah, what you're uh -huh, right. Mm -hmm. But in this case, this one's completely smooth. So okay. think about it like a spoon almost, nice okay. and smooth around the edges. Mm -hmm. So that's entire or smooth. Another type of margin is going to be lobed. And when you think about lobed, think about our oak species. You think about white oak. It's got mm -hmm. those indentations. Right. Those are the indentations in the lobes are the, the protruding parts of that. Mm -hmm. um, so a, an oak leaf such as a white oak leaf would be a lobed leaf. And then the another type of leaf margin would be serrated. And so if we think about the American beech, it's a great example of a nicely sharply serrated um, leaf edge, that nice serrated leaf margin. And then you can also have leaves that are both serrated, have serrated margins and are lobed, such as our red maple. So a red maple has, um, has those jagged edges, looks like little teeth, and then it's got three lobes as well. Yeah. So you can have a tree that has all of those. Now our, um, our species here that we're looking at today for our tree of the week, this one, its leaves are just starting to, to emerge, but as they unfurl, they are alternately arranged and they are simple, but they their leaf margins are going to be smooth and entire. And in fact, the leaf is going to be heart shaped, um, which is a great indicator of this species. Not mm -hmm. a lot of trees have heart shaped leaves. And this is the one that most people usually think of. And, and this is the um, Eastern redbud. Um, scientific name, Circus canadensis. It does have the lovely heart shaped leaves and the beautiful spring flowers that do come out before the leaves emerge. Um, it's, it's quite a beauty out here in the woods. Definitely, definitely. And I know every spring I look forward to seeing the red buds yep, out there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those that we see in the landscape a lot. Yeah. How do they get? Um, well, the red bug can grow up to 40 feet tall. Um, usually it's a little smaller, um, which um, makes it nice when you plant it in the landscape. You don't have a great big yard. You don't need something really large. This is a really nice addition. Um, it is uh, typically an understory tree in our forest. Um, and because of that, it is shade tolerant. Um, because it's found across Kentucky, it's able to grow in a variety of soils, which makes it nice for using it in home, home landscape as well. Um, but yeah, Eastern Redbud is a, it's a lovely tree. Um, it is um, used by wildlife. Um, as you can imagine, these flowers are um, used uh, by our bees and they're an important source for honey production early in that spring season. Um, the trees are browsed, especially when they're young, by deer and other mammals. And then the seeds, so there's, it produces a seed pod because it is in the, the pea or the bean, the Fabaceae family. Um, it produces a pod, a seed pod. And there are some birds, a few birds that will eat those seeds as well as mammals. So it does have some wildlife value as well. Besides planting in our landscape, can redbud be used? Well, redbud is um, actually the flowers are edible. Um, and so in this time of year, a lot of people will collect those flowers and you can make redbud jelly out of it. It's quite tasty mm -hmm. um, and you can find lots of recipes for that. You can also sprinkle these flowers on your salad. You want to add a nice um, color, something pretty to your salad. You can add the flowers to the salad as well. Mm -hmm. So it does, it does have some other uses besides planting in our landscape. So I mentioned its scientific name, um, and it's Circus canadensis. Mm -hmm. And so its, it's uh, genus name, Circus, is from Greek, and it means shuttle. And it refers to the shape of the seed pod. It looks like a weaving oh, shuttle, okay. which is yes. kind of cool. And canadensis means from North America. Mm -hmm. So it, it is, it's a great tree, and I think it's a great one to do in the spring because of these beautiful pink flowers out there. Yeah, it's something everybody should get outside and enjoy. Absolutely. And it, I hope you all get the opportunity to get out in your woodland, neighborhood, neighborhood or a local park and get to see this really striking redbud. Mm -hmm.